Hello everyone and welcome to the National School Game Show. It's really great to see all of you joining us this week to catch all the best action in this year's energy competitions. That's right and in this 8th edition of the series, we will continue to bring you all the inspirational stories about your school team and some of your schoolmates. My name is Aloysius Emmanuel. And you can call me Fiza. We have reached the final stages of this year's energy season and I'm sure that all of you can't wait to catch all the final matches of this year's A Division. But not to worry, our crew will be there working hard to bring you all the exciting matches. And if you want to see more of these athletes who may be your friends, relatives or even yourself, you can catch our highlights and pictures on our Vox Sports and Facebook pages. Also, if you have any suggestions or comments about this show, please write to us at this email address. We will definitely appreciate all your feedback. Also, do spread the word about this show to all your family and friends and allow them to share the passion. Now every week, we'll give you a chance to win vouchers totaling $300. We would like to thank our sponsors, Western Corporation, Singapore's Premier Soccer Store. We'll give you the contest details later in the show. Well, Fiza, let's go straight into the action, beginning with A Division Basketball Finals. Were there any surprises in the title chase this year? Well, let's find out. Defending champions Hua Chong Institution and the girls from Raffles Institution met in the A Division Girls Final and it was R.I. that took the game to HCI in the early stages. R.I.'s girls used their speed and strength to drive into the lane and take the lead in the first quarter. But HCI showed that they were no pushovers as they came back strongly to keep the score close and hoped to take the lead in the match. But R.I.'s girls were simply unstoppable in the first half as they continued to hold on to their lead through their accurate shooting from the inside and outside of the paint. The second half saw R.I. dominate the game as the girls in white found a better shooting form. They started to stretch their lead in the third. Their full court man defense helped to contain and outscore HCI as they stretched their lead to double digits. Hua Chong Institution's girls tried to cut down their deficit and get back into the game with their accurate shooting. But R.I. would not give up their lead as their captain Lana helped to control the boards. The finals MVP also led the RI girls in scoring as Raffles continued to dominate the game. The match ended 75 to 47 in favour of RI. Supporters of Anderson Junior College then packed the stands as AJC challenged HCI in the final. Anderson JC's rookie and finals MVP T Chai Sim led them in scoring as AJC started off strong in the encounter. But HCI, led by their captain Li Lai Sheng, scored back quickly to take the early lead in the first quarter. But within the first quarter itself, the lead would change hands once again as AJC's fast breaks allowed them to end the quarter with the lead against defending champions Hua Chong Institution. But HCI would come back in the second courtesy of their number 8 Tan Jin Wei who helped them score down the stretch and allowed them to retake the lead. HCI's outside shooting also helped them to maintain their lead as they went into halftime with a scoreline of 30 to 28. And it was all HCI after the break as they outscored the Anderson Junior College shooters and controlled the rebounds both offensively and defensively to close out the game in the second half. Defending champions Hua Chong Institution went on to wrap up the game with a scoreline of 66 to 53. They brought home the gold medal for the ninth straight year proving that they are the undoubted kings of A-Division basketball. The RI girls, on the other hand, broke HCI's four-year A-Division title reign to bring home the championship. Naturally, it feels great, but I, I think I owe it, owe it to the team. Like, I think my team played very well today. Like we had, we performed our role very well. Like everyone performed their own role very well, and I think everyone was super hardworking today. Yeah, so we really gave it our all, and there's no regrets. Yeah. What a great way to start the show, Aloy. That was a great final. You bet, Fiza. But we still haven't wrapped up this year's tournament yet because we have to find out who took home third spot. So we'll send you right off to the Singapore Basketball Association to catch the match. Anderson Junior College and Serangoon Junior College met in the third placing match of the A Division Girls Tournament. SRJC came into the match with high hopes as they entered the top four rankings for the very first time. And they took the game to last year's fourth place winners, Anderson JC, who came right back at SR to make the game a tight contest. 
but as the contest proceeded, AJC showed their experience and speed as they started to carve out a slim lead with their fast breaks. At halftime, both coaches tried to motivate their team to victory, but it was AJC that continued using their fast breaks to their advantage as they stretched their slim lead to 10 points at the end of the third. The girls from Anderson then proceeded to close out the game in the fourth quarter as they stretched their lead even further. The match ended with a scoreline of 68-57 to in favour of AJ. In the boys' third-placing match, Dunman High School faced Raffles Institution. And it was Dunman High School that started as the stronger side, taking an early lead. But RI kept themselves in the game with their solid attacking play as they matched DHS basket for basket, allowing them only slim leads throughout. But the star of the game was undoubtedly Dunman High's captain, Isaac, who led his team's offence, allowing them to lead 23-21 to at half-time. Both teams came out of the half-time break with renewed strength, but it was Isaac who helped DHS take control of the game with a drive to the basket. RI kept themselves close and even took the lead midway through the fourth quarter, but that only made DHS fight harder as they retook the lead and closed out the game 60-55. I think this is just the beginning. We have a strong J1 batch and if they manage to train hard and put in all their effort, their focus into next year's season, I think they'll go very far. Congratulations to the boys from Dunman High and the girls from Anderson Junior College on their third place finish this year. I am really sure that we can expect greater things from these teams in the future. Alright, let's move on to some softball action with the final of the A Division Boys Championship. Last week you saw the RI girls win the title. Will the RI boys win and get the double or will Hua Chong stop the RI onslaught? Let's find out. The two teams faced off at the ARJAS Sports Centre with Hua Chong Institution wanting to reclaim the title after losing it to Raffles Institution in last year's tournament. But defending champions RI started the game better as they struck out HCI's batters while scoring three runs themselves within the first two innings. That allowed them to take a three runs to nail lead. RI continued to play well in the rest of the five innings match but it was their fielding and pitching that helped them maintain their lead more than their batting skills. With the fielding at its peak, the Raffles Institution players had no trouble in getting the HCI batters out. And despite the inability of the RI batters to score themselves, their fielding won the match for them as they completely shut out the HCI HCI ended the match with no runs to their name, while RI held on to the three runs they made in the opening two innings to end the match with a score of three runs to nil. The RI boys walked away with the goal for the second straight year and managed to complete the double for RI in the A division this year. Well, Fiza, looks like RI has proven to be the school to beat in A Division softball. That's right, Aloy. Well, it's time for us to take a short break, but stay tuned because... You'll get to know who becomes champions of the A Division tennis finals for boys and girls. Plus, you'll catch up with the girls from Meridian JC football team. And like always, stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to the National School Game Show 2012 and you are right on time for us to give you the details of our weekly contest. It's really nice to see so many of you taking part and we have had many winners over the past few weeks. But if this is the first time you're taking part, this is how you do it. Listen out for our simple question at the end of today's show. Just send us the correct answer and you'll stand a chance to win vouchers totaling $300. Our prizes are proudly sponsored by Western Corporation, Singapore's premier soccer star. Email your answers to this address with your full name, IC number and contact details. You'll have seven winners each week, but please submit only one entry per person. Alright, let's move on to our next story, the A Division Tennis third placing matches. Let's see who brought home the bronze medal. St Andrews Junior College and Anglo-Chinese Junior College faced off in the boys' third placing match. Anglo-Chinese Junior College started well by winning the first singles match but the Saints would come back into the game. The Saints won the next two singles matches with ease as their opponents from ACJC were no match for the Saints. With that, 
SAJC was in pole position to take home third place. Their winning ways continue in the doubles matches. The two doubles pairings from St Andrews Junior College were in control against their ACJC opponents throughout the match. The Saints won both matches in straight sets to wrap up the encounter with an overall scoreline of four games to one to take home third place. In the girls' match, Victoria Junior College and Hua Chong Institution faced off for the bronze medals. It was an extremely close encounter as the players were evenly matched. Last year's runners-up, HCI, showed that they were the team to beat as they won the first two singles matches. But the BJC girls bounced back as they won a singles match themselves to make the overall score 2-1. The first BJC doubles pairing dominated their match against the Hua Chong girls. They went on to win their match in straight sets as they tied up the overall scoreline at two matches apiece to set up a dramatic finale in the second doubles match. The girls from HCI would come back from behind in that game to take two out of the three sets and win the match. HCI finished the tournament in third place with an overall scoreline of three games to two. I feel really proud to have uh, this team with me this year. Everyone did really, really well, and I'm, I'm pretty sure the coaches, the teachers, uh, are really happy of, uh, with the team. <laughs> and um, we we're really fortunate to have the guys' support this time round. Like they came down for our important matches, and it was a real confidence booster for us. Yeah. Now we know who has finished third, it's time for us to find out which two teams battle it out for the gold medal at this year's A Division Tennis Championships. The boys and girls teams from Raffles Institution were on course for a second double in a row, while the girls from ACJC and the boys from ACSI have shown their talent in this year's tournament. Let's find out which team came out tops. Raffles Institution and Anglo-Chinese School Independent faced off in the final of the A Division Boys Tournament. Raffles Institution and Anglo-Chinese School Independent faced off in the final of the A Division Boys Tournament. And it was defending champions Raffles who came out strong as they vied for their fourth straight title. And their first doubles pairing got them on their way with a win. The second doubles pairing from Raffles followed in their footsteps as they dominated their encounter with the ACSI doubles pairing. The ACSI boys were no match for the defending champions as the boys from RI went on to secure the first four games in order to set themselves up for a dream season as they had won every game with a scoreline of 5 nil en route to the final. But it was not to be as ACSI won the final singles to end the match 4-1 in RI's favour. In the girls' final, ACJC met RI and it was captain versus captain in the first singles. The captains were evenly matched in the first set. But RI's captain Nicole held on to her nerves and beat ACJC's captain Hannah in the close contest. That set the stage for an incredible final as ACJC and RI shared the spoils from the first four games with RI winning two singles and ACJC winning a doubles and a singles match. That set up a dream finale in the second doubles. Despite ACJC coming close to victory in their first trip to the final in eight years, there was no stopping RI as they won the decider. With that, Raffles Institution achieved a double gold finish in the National Interschool Tennis Championships for the second straight year. Uh, I mean, when we came in to this finals, there was only one thing on my mind was to defend our double goal. And for the guys, we wanted to make it a dream season because we have been undefeated the whole tournament. And coming to today, we, we really wanted to, to, to know, uh, win 5-0 and uh, uh, you know, remain undefeated. Yeah, this, this trophy is for everybody. No matter who played or who didn't play, everyone played a part in making this work. So I'm really, really proud of them. I couldn't be more honoured to lead a team like this. Those matches really felt like a final. Now, the energy season has not only been about the action on the courts and fields alone. We have caught up with players and teams who have not just won the championship, but have also inspired their school and fellow students with their spirit and determination. Okay, 
I've been coaching the Meridian Soccer Girls team for six years now. Going to the tournament, we train three times a week, and plus the girls they have their uh, own additional team training. So their dedication uh, for for this ADS tournament, you know, showed where they finished uh, third last year, and this year we came in second. The confidence, you know, when we lost the final, you know, the morale is low. Uh, I think that's that is normal. Um, so I tell them um, it's okay. Yeah, they've tried their best, and if, I think they have achieved, they have surpassed my expectation because we. Our target was just to, you know, at least try to aim for the semi-finals. So in a way, I'm proud of the achievements because even though we were lost in the final, uh, we never expected to go into the final in the first place. I think we have, uh, would like to thank the, the principal. Uh, we have given uh, the team a lot of support and also our two teachers in charge, uh, namely Mr. Zainuddin and uh, Miss Lee. Okay, these two teachers, uh, they've um, They've done a lot for the for the girls for the team, you know. Showed a lot of support and encouragement, and that's why the girls team can go so far this year. Initially, there wasn't any girls soccer team in our school, so being with them for the past seven years, this year this year was the highest achievement we have been through. We have we beat um, many teams and we actually fought all the way to the finals. Um, it's a pity that we didn't actually get to win the title, the, the championship, but I feel that it's actually the, the process is more important. The girls actually forged a very strong bonding uh, relationship and uh, friendship is definitely um, built up over the years. Even our alumni also play a crucial role in the success of uh, our team this year. So I would say that uh, I'm very, very proud of their achievement this year and they are, and they are truly a very remarkable team. After my um, O-levels, I actually came for the direct school admission over here and uh, I came for the trials and I got selected, so that's how I got to know football. Firstly, when I first came for the trials, I, I honestly did not have much knowledge about soccer because I have no soccer background. But when I came here, it's an amazing team sport. It's amazing how um, the players, 11 people working together on the pitch and um, how, to see how, people, how uh, a team has sportsmanship together. and. The, the idea of uh, 11 people working together just amazes me and um, when I came here, I received a lot of love from my team, from my seniors and that made me decide that this is the school that I want to come for. Yeah. Basically, as a captain, I'm actually like the pillar of support so, um, and a pillar of encouragement. Um, I made sure that I'll be the one in charge of the welfare of my entire team and um, Basically in games, I'll be the one giving them prep talks, um, uh, telling them to be confident, to go out and play as a team and uh, first and foremost, of course, we love our team and we give them, um, to give back to the love that I receive from uh, my principal, Miss Lai and all my soccer teachers in charge. We have this slogan that we have, uh, that we made since a few years ago and that is love, fight, believe, we conquer. So basically, this slogan has been with us and I believe it's the drive and the motivation as to how we are able to be here right now. We love each other, we fight with all that we can, we believe we can do it and that's how we conquer and we win matches. Firstly, I want to thank God for bringing me here. I believe that it's definitely not by chance that I'm here. And I would like to thank um, uh, all the teachers, Miss Lai, my coach, and most importantly of all, before my teammates. They are amazing. They made me who I am today and they gave me the courage to be the captain that I am here today and I'm indeed honoured to be the captain of this team. We are Marina Soccer Girls and you are watching the National Pro Game Show! The Meridian girls are really an inspiration to their schoolmates and to us as well, Andy Pisa. Yes, of course. Well, if you believe your teammate or classmate has been an inspiration and a great athlete to your school, give us his or her details. Tell us why. And if the Vox Sports crew finds it interesting and we have a good story, we'll come by your school to give them a surprise interview. So just write to us. It'll be fun. Plus, they get a chance to see themselves on TV, on Facebook and on our website. Alright, Fiza, it's time for us to take a short break. Okay. But don't go anywhere because... We'll be back with highlights from the A Division Hockey third placing and final matches. Plus, listen up for this week's contest question. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the National School Game Show. It's time for us to give you our weekly contest question. And this week's contest question is, which two teams met in the A Division Boys Basketball Final? which two teams met in the A Division Boys Basketball Final. 
Email your answers to this address with your full name, IC number and contact details. We have seven winners each week, so send your answers to us quickly to stand a chance to win vouchers totaling $300. Our prizes are proudly sponsored by Western Corporation, Singapore's premier soccer store. Now let's move on to the highlights from the A-Division hockey third-placing matches. Having lost out in the semi-finals this year, the teams that contested in the third-placing matches were eagerly battling hard for their bronze medal finish. Let's find out which teams were able to do so. In the third-placing match of the A-Division Girls Hockey Championships, Millennia Institute faced off against the St. Andrews Junior College girls in a tight fixture. The Saints had the better of the chances in the first half but found themselves unable to take the lead even with guilt-edged chances from penalty corner situations. The Saints went into half-time knowing that they needed to do better. But their bad luck in front of goal continued as they once again wasted another penalty corner opportunity. Their misfortune gave the girls from MI the opening to take the lead. MI was awarded a penalty flick late in the game and their penalty taker made no mistake as she slotted the ball past the SAJC keeper to break the deadlock and give Millennium Institute the lead. The Saints had another opportunity to find the equaliser but they once again failed to take advantage. That allowed MI to hang on to their lead to clinch third place in the tournament and win the match with a scoreline of one goal to nil. The team really performed well today. Like they really fight for like every ball, and um, they try to make every second count. And yeah, they uh, they pretty really much fight for it. And yeah, I'm proud of the team. Uh. I think they played played pretty well also because they kept uh, attacking on us, and we had to like counter attack them in you know, order for us to score. So they also played aggr equally aggressive as us. So with the bronze medal secured, it's time to find out who will be crowned champions in this year's A Division Boys and Girls Hockey Championship. And we are right here at the Sengkang Hockey Stadium to find out which two teams will strike gold in the two final showdowns. It's always an adrenaline rush when you have crowds in the stadium cheering their hearts out. These two matches are going to be the best in this year's competition. So let's not waste any time and catch the teams do battle. Defending champions Victoria Junior College and Anglo-Chinese Junior College faced off in the A-Division Girls Final. And it was the defending champions that started the game better as VJC's girls scored early in the game to take a 1-0 lead, much to the delight of their supporters and schoolmates. Victoria Junior College had a chance to extend their lead, but their well-worked penalty corner lacked a good finishing touch in front of goal. More chances came their way, but VJC simply could not find a way past the stubborn ACJC defence. The ACJC girls had a chance late in the game to level proceedings, but they could not score and that allowed VJC to hold on to their lead till the final whistle. The match ended 1-0 in favour of the girls from Victoria Junior College who retained their A-Division girls hockey title for yet another year. Um, it feels like a real honour because it's a testament to the, t the nine years' worth of effort that our seniors has put in as well as the effort that my team has put in because we really worked hard this year and we really, really wanted to get the 10th year for our school. So we're just really glad that we managed to pull it off. In the boys' final, defending champions Raffles Institution scored early in the match against Victoria Junior College in a rematch of last year's final. VJC tried to get themselves back into the game via a penalty corner, but they could not break the RI defence. Raffles Institution then took advantage of VJC's misfortune as they scored again and doubled their lead in the match, making the scoreline 2-0. VJC would go on to score a late goal, but it was too little too late as RI won the match with a final score of two goals to one. RI went on to lift the A-Division hockey title for the second straight year. Uh, they had a very good game today, they got a very strong side and we know that next year they're going to be hungrier, stronger and we just have to make sure that we are hungrier and stronger as well. Congratulations to Raffles Institution and Victoria Junior College for winning the A Division Boys and Girls titles respectively. Raffles Institution overcame VJC in a very exciting final 2-1 while the VJC girls overcame ACJC with a solitary goal. Yes, Lloyd, it has been another jam-packed episode and it's time for us to wind down today's show.
Yes, don't forget to catch our show next week as we promise to bring you more exciting sporting highlights. Don't forget to visit our website at this address to comment, like or share our stories with our family and friends. Remember, share the passion. Remember to like our Facebook page and follow our Twitter account for more highlights and updates. Take care and have a great sporting week ahead. We will see you in seven days. Bye-bye.